Hey everyone, I'll get to the draft in just a second. I just want to say thanks to everyone that's been watching, commenting, liking, those of you that have subscribed over the, the past few weeks. I know it's been kind of a, a long, dark time since Ixalan, and we haven't had a new set for quite a while. I'm looking forward to Rivals, I hope you guys are too, but you guys really are like my rock, the ones that have <laughs> kept with me through all this time. In a week or so, there'll be a, a whole bunch of new faces to the channels, people come and looking for the new sets, but you guys really are the ones that have kept me going, so th thanks a lot. I really do appreciate those of you that have commented and interacted with me and that like and subscribe. I, I try not to really hit you over the head with that because I know when I watch videos I hate it, but it does mean a lot to me, and so I don't know. I appreciate it. I don't think I, I would have come this far without you guys. I'm also celebrating close to nine months of recording, and this is my 300th video. So how cool is that? 300. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft League. This is Old Man Pool. This is probably my last cube of the format. I've enjoyed it an awful lot, but we're coming close to Rivals of Ixalan. I know there's a, a preview thing on Magic Online for that on Thursday, so I'm probably going to play in that and try and post something for you. And then next week we've got drafts. So excited. So anyway, we should talk about this pack real fast. Here we got Natural Order is pretty solid if we're in green. We could take Brain Freeze and try and go into Storm, because that's always kind of sweet. Play Grave Titan, Torrential Gear Hulk, Ulamog's a good ramp payoff. I think Natural Order is probably the best just on its own, but I kind of want to play Brain Freeze. I kind of want to play Storm again. I think that's the most fun I've had with the deck in the format. I'm not sure this is the best first pick ever, but I'm going to kind of force it, so... Okay, uh, Frantic Search is a pretty good Storm card. We also have a fair number of dual lands. If we're forcing it, we're forcing it, but I think Frantic Search often comes back. It's not like the absolute nut card or anything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're going to try for it, and we'll, we'll see. We have a win condition. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to do something, hopefully. All right. Tezzeret's probably... F well... Untapping the artifacts is good because you do need mana, but I mean, we could just take like Rafelos. This is a little bit of a late Rafelos. I feel like a mono green in Vintage Cube is a fair margin worse than it is in Legacy Cube, where I think it's one of the better decks. But eh, this is third pick Rafelos. The only thing that really fits into a Storm deck is Thirst for Knowledge. And who knows, maybe we get like Natural Order back. We, we could go down that path too. Okay, well, there's Yagmas Bargain, Empty the Warrens for Storm. There's Elvish Mystic for Green. There's Elspeth Sun's Champion if we just end up being like some sort of a blue white dirtily control deck, which is another perfectly fine, pretty fun format or deck in the format, even if it's not quite as focused. I think I still just want to, I want to make this happen if we can. The last time we played in the format, I think we got pretty lucky with some like broken artifacts right off the bat. I'm not sure you're gonna get to do that very often. Dig through time, I guess can be good. It's kind of a nombo with Yogmoth's will. Could just take Noble Hierarch here. This is another one of the best green mana dorks. I don't think balance ends up being great in Storm. I don't think. I mean, potentially you play it early, you could like like empty the warrens turn two or something for like a medium amount and then well i guess balance with empty the warrens out already is pretty bad they were just gonna take the hierarch balance is always a tough hard for me to really grok what what deck it's good in what deck it's not okay here we've got sylvan library also a grook wild speaker do feel like mono green is calling our name here like i said it's not my favorite deck in the format but i guess that we haven't actually recorded a draft with it yet either so um, this is actually kind of close. I think Sylvan Library is better. I do like Garuk a lot, though. I think it's one of your best kind of cheap payoffs for the deck. Ordinarily, you're ramping and trying to hit something really huge, but Garuk does a really good job of... Eh, okay. Hmm. So we have Desperate Ritual, which is our Storm payoff, or we have Avenger of Zendikar. I feel like we should take the Avenger here. I feel like we have been pretty open for green, and this is a pretty good payoff. The real test will be whether we get back our uh, natural order. Probably not, but... Okay. 
Pretty Elise, I haven't really ever played. I guess you draw a bunch of cards off her, potentially. She seems pretty weak to me, honestly. We could just take something like Tropical Island, which is a really good fetch. I don't know if we'll end up being, being blue-green. Card just, I don't know, feels lackluster. Like, making mana elf isn't usually that big of a deal. Blowing up an artifact or enchantment, I guess, is not terrible. Like, Dak Faden does the same thing, and you steal it for two mana less. You know, take Tropical Island. Okay, is this our first pack? Well... I'm afraid we don't, we don't have a, a natural order, but that's okay. We also didn't wheel the ritual, so that might, might indicate the storm isn't the most op open thing. We'll take Xenigos here. This is a, a fine playable, if not a crazy exciting one. Yeah. Alright, well, let's swap ourselves around here. Do we want Center's Deliverance, I guess? Probably just as a, a reasonable sideboard card. You can probably play that card main deck, too. A uh, Shardless Agent, I guess we could play off Tropical Island. It's not a real high impact card though. Nothing else here is real exciting. Mask of Worm, guess is kind of a payoff. I guess that's probably most likely to make the deck. It's not very good though. Okay, Elvish Mystic coming around is a good sign for us. Okay, we, we've got some power here. I, I definitely will, if we had just taken the correct pick, quote unquote, early on with the natural order, I think our deck could be better. That's something you'll definitely miss out on, but uh, we tried to live the dream. No one can blame us for that, right? And also, if there's anyone else at the storm table, we kind of screwed them over. <laughs> okay, Botanical Sanctum. So we have a pretty easy out. Okay, we managed to play Mystic Snake then. This isn't a crazy val or like super powerful card, but it is a fine one. Ooh, well this card is... Oh, this deck, or <laughs> this hand, there we go. Pretty nuts. Got Survival the Fittest, which is good for sure. We've also got Bribery, which I think is just the pick. I think in some decks, like if you're playing Reanimator or like another Mono Green deck, Bribery is basically a game winner. Sometimes you have to sideboard it out, but the upside is really, really high. Uh, we've also got Ashiok, which is kind of too far away for us, I think, even though that's a very good card. We also have Jace, which I like a lot. I think bribery is best though. Bribery is. And like I said, we already have kind of a, a good out into green blue, so I think we have a pretty good chance of being able to play it. Uh, Jace Architect of Thought is perfectly serviceable. There's a metal worker here, but we don't really have the deck for that. Also, Taiga, which I guess is good for Xenagos if we end up going that route. I think Jace is probably just better. I also have Turnabout, I guess, but. Mm. We have to be able to generate a lot of mana before that's particularly good. Alright, yeah, let's take Jace here, I think. Okay, Genesis Wave, High Tide. So High Tide is very, very good if we're very much in blue. But green, I think mono green really does like being heavy on, on green sources. I mean, we've already got Fellows, which is sort of like High Tide every turn. Yeah... We could play Genesis Wave. I'm a sucker for this card. I think it's a little bit of a trap. It never ends up being as good as I want it to be, but I do love it. I also just take things like Mana Leak for some interaction. I maybe like that, actually. You can also see taking Impulse. Let's just find like a good threat. But yeah, I think, I think I like Mana Leak. We're going to get back Natural Order anyway, right? Right? Okay. Kozilek is pretty good ramp payoff. I like Acidic Slime a lot, though. I also like a Ancient Tomb. Mm. Ancient Tomb's probably the most busted of the cards. Also Glenelendra. Man, there's everything I want in this pack. This is... Gotta be... I guess both of these are pet cards. I think is probably a better pet card than Acidic Slime, although I do like the slime a lot. I also play Skull Clamp in this deck. Mm. We hit a fair number of things with Skull Clamp. It turns mana dorks into cards in the late game. I don't know which is correct here. I could really see any of these being the play. But I think I'm going to take Glenelandra. Yeah, she just provides so much interaction with your opponent. It can be really, really solid. So we've got Scalding Tarn, which goes and finds Tropical Island. We've got Sylvan Caryatid, which is, you know, fine. Not knock this out of the park, but fine. Also have Tangle Wire, which... If we're ramping out early, may slow our opponent down more than us, but I think 
and we're trying to play potentially kind of big stuff, it might still not be great. Now we take the Scalding turn here. This helps us with Xenagos and it fetches for Tropical Island. I think it's going to be one of our better lands we can pick up. Nature's Claim, Repeal, and Sundering Titan. Guess we probably want Sundering Titan. We do need some more big payoffs. The fact that we have uh, Dissenter's Deliverance is not all that different from Nature's Claim in the cube. A lot of the time you're hitting an artifact anyway. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think they're fairly comparable. Repeal's fine. Probably would play Gruel Signet too, but I think we just kind of want a couple more payoffs. Sundering Titan's good for that. Well, then I said that, and then we got a Terastodon. Also, have a Gift Sun given on the off chance that Burial Rites came around. I think let's just take Terastodon, though. This is a quite good ramp payoff, especially for as late as it came around. Probably a good sign for us. Do we want Recto Signet, or do we want Force Spike? Don't think we really want Fire and Ice, with only the Ice half being available most of the time. Don't think Mutavault's great in a deck that... He's playing Rafello, so naturally may end up being a little bit strict on mana. Recto Signet doesn't directly help us splash. It is okay. Or Force Spike, which is just good, maybe interaction early on. I think I kind of like Force Spike. I could see the Signet being the pick there. Wow, it's a late Tinker. You have like no artifacts. That's a late Stoneforge, too. This pack was super, super good, but kind of crazy. You'll take Survival of the Fittest, though. This is pretty good. You can turn kind of awkward late game cards into big payoffs, and early game you can pitch other cards. It just smooths a lot of draws. If we end up, I guess we're a ways away from Reanimate, but it's good in that case, too. I think we'll take Savannah at this point. And there's some. I'm not sure what other people are drafting. I think Metalworker's pretty late there, too, and Recruiter of the Guard definitely is has a home in a lot of decks. Take. Urborg is another fixing card. Not else. Not much else here, honestly. So we take Exquisite Firecraft, but I don't think we're going to be that far into red. Uh, Overgrown Tomb? I guess if we do end up in black a little bit, we just take Flicker Wisp. Ugh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take the land. None of those are super exciting. And who knows, we may end up wanting to play something there. I guess we'll take Tingle Wire. This is another good card, at least in my head, that doesn't get enough respect. Expel Sky. Don't think it's likely to make our deck very often, but it is there if we need it. Okay. Can do Show and Tell. Can do Woodfall Primus. Can do Thran Dynamo. Can do True Name Nemesis. And maybe even Mana Gorger Hydra. Kind of a distant. Distant fourth, fifth, whatever <laughs> I counted. So we actually don't have like absolutely tons of mana ramp. We have a good amount, but I wonder if picking up something like Woodfall Primus is actually a mistake here, because we didn't get like natural order and the like. Could just take True Name Nemesis. This is just a very solid card. Blocks well. You can put a clock on your opponent if it needs to. Let's just take Show and Tell. Show and Tell's better the more huge things we get. I think we might just take show and tell here. This is probably the deck for it, right? We're in blue green. Has the potential to backfire. Like, oh wow, someone didn't take a Mox Ruby? I wonder if there were two pieces of power in this one. Okay, well, we're, we're happy to take that for sure. Uh, this is actually a pretty good pack for us, too, though. We would play Time Spiral, I think. We'd play Mystic Confluence. We'd play Ulamog. Hopefully, we get something solid out of this. Yeah. Uh, hard to argue with a second pick Moxon. Oh wow, this is pretty good too. We have Windswept Heath, which could go and find Tropical Island. Um, we've got Mana Vault, which I think is probably just the pick. Also a Breeding Pool, which is good. We have Green Sun Zenith, which is good. Yeah, I think Mana Vault is, is what we want here. Oh, <laughs> Channel and Emrakul. So Channel lets you do... Kind of stupid stuff, although we didn't see tons and tons of... Well, I mean, we didn't pick Eldrazi. We had opportunities to take both Kozilek and then... I guess it's not impossible that um, Ulamog would wheel. I guess that's probably the pick over, like, Spell Pierce. I don't think Emrakul, the Promised End, while being good, is maybe a little bit expensive. 
Not sure channel will make our deck, but has has some potential. So we have gotten a, a lot of power kind of late in the pack here. Or I guess late in the draft. Early in this pack. Alrighty. Yamamaya Elder's good, but maybe not nuts. We just want Inkwell Leviathan. We do have some big payoffs. We don't have a way to tinker for this. That's kind of expensive. Forge Master I don't think is great, especially without Leviathan. Although I guess I could find Sundering Titan. How much do we think we need the Elder? It's fine. Not like broken. Could also just play Sneak Attack. It's not bad with Terastodon. Or with Sundering Titan. Or with Avenger. Uh, that might actually be the best. I'm not sure it makes the pick. I, hmm. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to take Sneak Attack, though. We're kind of splashing for red. That has the potential to be very powerful. Ooh. Okay, so I think Beast Within is probably what I want here. Both of Druids. It's a little bit finicky. You can really get your opponent on occasion. But yeah, I, th I think Beast Within is just going to be better. This is a nice catch-all card. I think you're happy to play it in most green decks. Upheaval. Ooh. I think we are in the market for upheaval here. We're a little bit light on lands. I would like to pick things like Spire Buff Canal. And Oath of Nyss is pretty good. But we have the potential to make a lot of mana with like Rafellas. We have some mana rocks. Upheaval, I think, could be quite good in this deck. I don't know. This, this sort of felt sort of just like a mishmash of cards. But there's maybe some power here. Play Eureka. Probably worse than show and tell on average for us, which I think is probably kind of borderline anyway. And I do just want stomping ground, because then I guess going Karma already finds green. I don't think Eureka is that absurd for us, honestly. I think I'm just going to take stomping ground and keep picking up a couple more mana sources, try and shore up that side of the deck. Okay, I think we're okay taking Mana Gorge or Hydra. We also have Ancient Grudge, which is worth consideration, certainly. Managorge or Hydra, I don't think is something that you play all that often, but if our opponent... Well, I don't know. It's kind of slow. Well, hmm. Against some opponents, I feel like this just sort of destroys them. Yeah. Okay, opposition, probably pretty good here. A good number of... Well, a reasonable number of creatures, not tons. I think it's better than anything else we have. I'm not sure if it'll make the cut or not. Green Sun Zenith coming around, solid for us. That's exciting. And some other stuff. I guess we'll take like Sea Chrome Ghost. Is there any way we actually use this? Probably not, but Forge Masters, not gonna make the cut, I don't think. I guess it's better than the alternatives. We have to find literally all the artifacts in our deck to get there. Yeah, I guess. Uh we're not gonna splash for the Pride Mage, I don't think. I guess we did end up with both of our burning effects. It's pretty bad for us, though. We don't have tons and tons of... Uh, you really want artifacts to make this great. Like, creature ramp is a lot less exciting. Okay, so I don't think that the deck is, like, the nut or anything, but we have some pretty solid cards. We have some good interaction. I wonder if we want to play something like Show and Tell. Survival of the Fist also may not quite get there. We don't have anything that does value out of the graveyard. It does kind of smooth draws, but it's a card on its own. I think Survival gets cut. It's a little bit of a shame because we, we have some like solid blue cards, but I think we're also missing out on some of the real high power uh, green effects. But we do have some like good interaction. We could get there. We want to keep Sneak Attack and Show and Tell, I guess is a pretty big question. We have three cards we're happy to sneak in. They're bad against some decks, but I guess they're pretty bad with like Upheaval. Right Breed is obviously great. I think, oh, I think Channel does not make the cut. It's good with Sundering Titan, but we have to get up to four green sources before we can play either of our other things. I guess it's pretty good with up upheaval. It's kind of interesting. 
I still think it might be a little bit speculative. I feel like you need at least a, a couple of good Eldrazi, like some true game-winning cards to make Channel exciting for you. Is this our final? Maybe Channel's better than Sneak Attack? Sneak Attack being Sacrifice Effect is painful too. Yeah, it's a splash. Makes it worse. Maybe we'll just play Channel. We'd also play 23 lands. We do have a couple of... I guess we have one fetch, I think, right? Yeah, I think we're going to cut Channel. This might be a mistake. You guys have to let me know what you think in the, the comments. But I feel like we actually just don't have that much utility for it. All right, other cards of note. Don't really care about Spellskite much, especially without knowing my opponent's deck. We are going to play our Stomping Ground, Tropical Island, Scalding Tarn, uh, not Savannah, not Thicket, not where we're going with Botanical. Okay, so ended up with a decent, decent amount of lands. Is Frantic Search worth it at all? We're a little bit light on card draw. Not miserably, but a little bit. Yeah, I think it's probably just okay in the deck. Okay, well, we have a, a little bit of early interaction with Mana Leak and Force Spike, and then turning it into a Glenelendra. Opposition. Maybe Opposition's just bad. We really don't have that many creatures either. Mm. <laughs> now that I'm looking at the deck, there's a bunch of things I'm like, well, yeah, that's probably not ideal. Well, yeah, that's probably not ideal. Let's take out Opposition, maybe put in Frantic Surge. Even Upheaval maybe isn't always fantastic, but I think it's pretty good. If we have something like Rafelos, obviously it's absurd. Okay, okay. I, I think I think this is the, the final. Let me add in some lands. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, I think after a little bit of deliberation, we decided on seven forests, uh, six islands, and then we're going to have our red sources taken care of by the Mox Ruby, Stomping Ground, Scalding Tarn. Uh, don't have as many forests as like a true Rafelos deck I think dreams of, but eh, this seems seems okay. I'll see you guys for match one.